Hi everybody, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Jeannie Hendricks. I'm a gardener, I'm a master gardener. I raise butterflies. I have a pollinator garden. I grew up on a farm and we still have our century farm in Iowa. And I have a very special relationship with Mother Nature. This is to be centered on painted lady butterflies, but I will tell you from past experience, if you strike out looking for a painted lady, you're going to find everything else. So I'm gonna share this book with you, and I suggest you take this with you anytime that you're looking for butterflies or larvae or eggs. It is simply the life cycle of butterflies and they're gonna get a close up of it. The beauty of this is it shows you pictures of every egg. It shows you pictures of every larva, uh, butterfly, every pupa, and it's all done by Florida people. These are all native butterflies to our state. So as you, as you learn, you're going to develop a curiosity and this will really answer a lot of your questions. I'm going to talk first about migration. Just a little side note about migration. Some people say, well, why do they migrate? Why don't they just stay in one place? Butterflies are cold-blooded, and they are actually in the same family as lobster and crabs. They have an exoskeleton. They are cold-blooded. They don't have the ability to generate heat. So they have to go to somewhere where it's warm. So that's why often during the summer months, you'll find them in the middle of the country. Monarchs uh, migrate all the way up to Canada. And then in the winter, they go down to Mexico to the Oyamel Forest in Mexico. So they either go to get warm or they go where the food source is. Painted ladies, they fly at a speed of 30 miles an hour. To put it into perspective, I used to do a lot of bicycling in the mountains. So I can ride the Rocky Mountains and my average speed was 19. Uh, on a downhill slide, sometimes a little bit more, but 19 miles an hour was pretty much what I could do. These butterflies weigh the same as a paper clip, 30 miles an hour. They can fly 100 miles a day. I can ride my bike 100 miles a day, it takes me all day. And believe me, that is, that is one accomplishment they weigh the same as two rose petals. So put it into perspective and think about the energy that these little things have. They're found all over the world. Painted ladies are on every continent with the exception of Antarctica. I'll give you a little side note. Since we're talking migration, I have quite a bit of experience with monarchs. And something I find very interesting is that the monarch is the only butterfly to deliberately uh, migrate to and from a destination. Their migration is triggered by many different things, length of day, temperature, angle of sun. Another real cool thing about butterflies is science doesn't have all the answers. So that's part of the discovery. That's what really makes it fun. Uh, scientists have tried to scramble the monarch's GPS system. They put them into a situation where the light is different, uh, where the compass heading is different. They've changed everything they could to confuse them. And the monarch just goes, hey, I'm going, I'm going to Mexico, I'll see you later. So you cannot confuse them, I guess, is the, uh, the result, result and answer from that. Painted ladies, however, winter near the Mexican-U.S. border. They fly at an altitude of anywhere from 10 to 30 feet above sea level. One thing that makes them different is, I guess if I were coming up to a building, I'd go, oh, I think I'll drive around it. Painted ladies go over an obstruction. They don't go around it. I don't know what they do in New York City, but that's how they, that's how they maneuver. They have heat sensors in their wings, and that measures the amount of sunlight that they need to fly. Essentially, they are solar powered. Their migration, instead of being a direct flight to and fro, they refer to it as eruptive, I-R-R-U-P-T-I-V-E, -E, meaning they unpredictably fly from place to place, really without a lot of geography or regard to season or geography either. 
Migrating butterflies do take advantage of the winds and they will draft on the winds. They'll get on a wind, uh, blow in the direction they're inclined to go. The resulting butterflies go north. In the good years where they have a lot of butterflies, they attract media attention because you will find some newscaster out at five o'clock saying, well, look at Jim Bob's, uh, look at his windshield. There's yellow butterfly goop all over it. And that is the fat that they store. While they are a larva, they eat and eat and eat and eat. And if you've ever heard the story of um, the hungry caterpillar, that's who they are. Statistically, if human babies grew at their rate, we would be the size of a hippo in two weeks. So they store all of this fat. They are in such plentiful numbers that when they do fly, they often get tangled up in traffic and because that's out of the ordinary, then they will make the evening news. They don't stop to eat. They use up all of their energy before they ever stop, pull over to the side and get a sandwich. Uh, they don't stop to feed until they've used their resources carried over from that caterpillar stage. The very hungry caterpillar, remember?